Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Play Factorio Space Exploration. Here's my uh, space station that we were talking about in the uh, last in the last episode. As you can see, the uh, the various different things in it are now starting to um, to fill up. So we we've, we've got we we had the the coal and we had the coal, the iron and the copper before, I think. Now we've got steel, green circuits, red circuits. Blue circuits aren't being made quickly enough down on Norvis, but the thing is, with a lot of these things, I'm aware that I'm going to build up quite big buffers here that I think I'm going to get through fairly slowly. So there's a massive, massive drain on whatever's producing the stuff to uh, to fill up the rocket, to then fill up the um, the warehouse up in orbit. And then the amount of demand will plummet as we just start using the stuff up gradually and are only replacing what we were using, rather than trying to fill up an entire rocket and an entire warehouse, which is obviously a bit more, um, a bit more difficult. We've got the, um, what do we call it, stone and glass coming through from uh, from Ganymede now, that's working quite happily, and plastic coming up from Norvis as well. And we've even got um, cryonite coming through, but shh, I'll touch on that in a bit later. <laughs> we need to start importing vulcanite up here as well, and, and and basically all of the other exotic materials that are coming from other planets. This was sort of, this is more of an overflow than anything else. So, as, we, as it comes along, we've got down here, we've got, I've, I've started to expand a bit more, so we had this uh, station here that was collecting the various things to be put into a, into a train once I eventually get to that stage. Um, but at the moment, that's just filling up uh, the, the chests at the moment, and as you can see, we've got the various different things being coming in here. In fact, there should be a belt there like that to, to allow that one to fill up. And we've got the second and third trains here that are going to be filling up with the various liquids. And now you can't, um, in the modern versions of Factorio, you can't actually put multiple different liquids into one single fluid wagon. You used to be able to actually. I think you could, you could do. There were there were three. I think there's, there's something like three wag, three fluid uh, tanks on a wagon. If you look at them cosmetically, um, there's only one on that one because it's just a picture of it. Um, and I think you used to be able to put different things in the different tanks on it. But now that's not the case. So we've got slightly longer trains here, so I can fit four different fluids onto each one. And I'm working through trying to work out what the different fluids are that I'm going to need. And uh, I got to five, um, and so I've left a bit of room for future expansion as well. And for all these fluids, I built up a fluid processing system down here. So we've got things like a machine here that's turning um, ice into back into water, melting the ice. Um, at least when any gets brought up. As you can see here, we got a little bit and then it sort of ran out. We're then turning a lot of that into steam in order to use for the uh, the coal liquefaction and also for the for cracking. Oh no, that just uses water for cracking the heavy oil and the light oil into um, into petroleum gas. So this is just a standard sort of petrochem thing, but it's using the bigger uh, biochem facilities instead of the little chemical plants because that's what you have to use when you're in space. And that means over here, as you can see, we've got the tanks filling up with heavy oil, light oil, petroleum gas, and water. I say filling up with; they're all actually completely empty now, but they. We, we put some in there in the first place, at least. Um, as I mentioned, cracking down here. Then we're making lube and... Um, oh, here we go. A chemical gel, that one. And also the coolant, except the coolant isn't actually being made yet because we've run out of um, heavy oil. Okay. So we've now got the, cry <laughs> the cryonite has finally come in, but we've run out of heavy oil. So we're not making any of the coolant yet. But to be honest, that's not a problem, um, except in that it means I just need to get the uh, the ice up and running. Uh, the, the ice must flow to come up here and um, and get everything working. And then, then all of these things will... Let's just set those, let's set those going. And then all of these things will start to work as they, as they should. So in order to get that, so as you notice, as I said, this cryonite has arrived. Um, and the ice, I think I, sh I think I shipped that up from possibly from Norvis, I don't, I don't actually remember. Um, but if we now look over here, this is out on Frost, my um, my cryonite and other stuff planet. And so as you can see, I've expanded this one out quite a bit. It used to be we had just this area up here. We had this this trickle of ber uh, beryl and cryonite ore coming in and being turned into um, beryllium. Uh, which is going off yes down this belt here and over here we had cryonite being produced in small quantities and some ice being made as well um, again in small quantities i've expanded this out quite a lot so um, the ice in particular have just expanded the existing system because there was quite a lot of cryonite being produced here so i thought well let's just stick with that because that's enough for ice production and so i've got this nice tall column of of ice production going on here i might need to expand this further we'll, we'll see how it goes and that's flowing down into one of the rockets down here, which, um, as you can see, is it's, it's filling up quite well, actually. That's two-thirds full. Um, 
Nearly 300 out of 500, yeah. So well, a bit less than two thirds full, but it's getting there. Cryonite, um, I'm doing in, and Beretman is uh, coming in in much. Oh, I'll put radar in. Let's, let's, let's put radar in. Nip down there to do so. So for cryonite, I've got a cryonite unloading station down here, and various, and uh, the cryonite is being processed. So we've got, uh, we're crushing it here to turn it into the oh, into the, the crush stuff. I've got a massive quantity of these crushers, and then chemical plants to turn it into, to, oh, to wash it, and then then we. Um, cooking it to turn it into the cryonite rods, which can then be passed up onto the into, into the rocket, and and that's a pretty pretty simple process. It seems to produce a lot of cryonite for the amount of stuff you have spread out. So this this amount here has been able to quite happily fill up the rocket, um, as and as you saw by having it by the fact it's gone out to the space station, and it's also filled it up a second time as well. If we look at the uh, the cryonite rocket here, it's already completely full. So we've made two rockets with the cryonite, and the system has just stopped because it's. We don't need any more. The ice, as I said, is a bit slower, but I could probably boost that a bit. The beryllium is a bit more of a problem. So as you can see, uh, let's use map mode. This little area down here is producing the cryonite. This bit up here is producing the ice. All of this is producing the beryllium. Now there's a few issues with this. Um, we've got again the same sort of rate flowing. We've got a full blue belt flowing in, and that's not quite enough oh it is just enough to no it's not quite enough to run all of these um pulverizers but i do have all of these um not not full but with oh no not yeah not full with three um productivity modules in them then we've got the massive ranks of um of these chemical plants of which we're using about two thirds i did add some more over here because i seem to have more than they were able to cope with but actually i, I don't know it doesn't it Essentially, this is split across across here because I ran out of room to expand this way. But it's all going onto the same belt anyway, and all going into this system here, which again is only running at about 50% capacity. So here we have a rather not full blue belt of the of the of the product coming in. So that could that would, it would be nice if that ran a bit faster. So I, I could potentially come in here and pull out some of these productivity modules uh, to make this go a bit faster. Um, but then I wouldn't have enough coming through from this. Um, on this belt because this is an entire belt coming through. The other possibility is I could put in a load more pulverizers and take out some of the and, and put in extra productivity modules and that would mean I'd go from getting um, plus 24% productivity to plus 32% productivity which is it's about that's about going to be about a 5% increase so it's, it's, it's barely worth it. Um, so, so I mean I might get an extra sort of two machines here running and anyway it's it generally it just doesn't seem to be producing quite enough however the other possibility is that I've got a second output here that it'd be absolutely trivial to start using this one and then double the number of um, pulverizers um, but that would run onto a problem I'm going to get to in a moment and we also noticed here that we've got basically these two full blue belts coming out here and running in here and these are flickering because I have power issues which I'm going to talk about in a moment but um, so yeah we've got all of the all of this infrastructure and as you can see it's a relatively slow trickle of the, of the beryllium ingots coming out from all of that so it's it's rather a it's, it's, it's not producing as much as I'd like it to put it that way and so because of that um, this rocket is only what 75% full um, no a bit like well yeah, almost almost 75% full, and it's been running for as long as this one's got at least two rockets worth. And yeah, so it's it's a slow process producing the um, producing the beryllium, and it's, it's yeah, it's, it's not it's, it's not great. But unfortunately, there's not an enormous amount I can do to improve it. The biggest problem I have at the moment is the power production. So as you can see, we've got this um, flickering effect going on here because we're using all of the power. And then I've got an accumulator hooked up to a switch here to turn these on and off basically whenever there's more than 50% power. Um, and that means these are running at presumably at about 50% speed or maybe a bit less. It's hard, it's hard to say exactly. Yeah, that's a lot less than 50% speed. So there, there, there isn't enough power to run these even at half speed, which is a bit of a shame um, because I could actually do with that extra stuff coming through. And there's not a lot I can do about that because I don't have the power parts out here with me at the moment to build up an additional um, additional nuclear power station uh, like like this one. Um, I say I say I don't have the parts. It, I, I could ship them out by rocket, and I probably I probably will have to eventually. But at the moment, 
I suspect I'm probably not going to get through beryllium quite as quickly as this system is, is capable of producing it. So I'm hoping, and this will remain to be seen, and if necessary I'll come out and expand the system, um, but I'm hoping that this will produce enough beryllium that once this is, this rocket has filled up and flown off to the moon, but the, the, uh, the space station, and then filled up again and flown off the space station and filled up again, at that point there will be enough in all of the buffers, the rocket, the warehouses and so on, that the system can just sort of calm down and go to sleep and or just build up a stock in here and we will be producing it faster than it's used. So there's this sort of initial build up process while we're just sort of generate fill, filling up all the buffers. But my hope is that once once we get to the, the buffers are full and everything's ready to go and we start actually using the stuff that we'll actually that it'll all be able to keep up and we won't have we won't have have shortages of it. Um, it remains to see whether that's actually true or not. Um, but I'm 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 hoping. I think I possibly need to put in some more uh, meteorite defence guns here because I had to move some of these out in order to make space for all of these chemical plants. In hindsight, I should have built all of this a bit further away, maybe down here or something. I don't know. But um, you know, hindsight 2020 and all that. Uh, and yeah, so I didn't. <laughs> The other thing I've done here is that there's these side products of these um, systems where we're, they're producing, well this one produces sand at a, a steady trickle and the cryonite one produces stone again at a, at, a, at, a, at a trickle as you can see here there's not very much of it coming out but there is some and it needs to be dealt with. At first I was just dumping it into, um, into these machines and turning it into landfill but as you can see there's, this chest will gradually fill up it's about a third full now and uh, that was that was from quite a lot of the uh, sand coming from out of the beryllium processing, which I've now sent off somewhere else. So I think that's going to be okay for the little little machines up here, but for the for the much larger scale stuff, I'm down here. I'm um, bringing the stone down here, pulverizing it into sand, and feed, adding in this sand as well, and turning it into glass. The glass is being fed up this belt into the fourth rocket, and then will be shipped off to the space station like like the rest of it. And um, I need to play with the numbers here to try and probably prioritize this one over the vulcanite I, I, I don't know we may run into a situ into a problem at some point where i'm producing glass on my outposts faster than it's actually being used up um, and turned into <laughs> used up on the space stations but again that i shall um, burn that bridge when i come to it as, as the saying almost goes i suppose another possibility would be to put in some more um, solar panels but i think that's a little bit um i don't know actually maybe there are some in my inventory up here. There's 27 of them. Okay, that's not a lot. And solar power isn't particularly great out here because we're so far from the sun. So I think that's probably not going to help a great deal. Um, right, so in, in order to get this running at that, the speed it was, I, the speed I wanted to, um, I've moved away from the, the system I was using before where we're um, just digging up digging up stuff and putting it on a yellow belt and bringing it in that way because that's much too slow. That's 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 a terrible way to do it. Um, although I am actually using the coal that way, and it's as you can see, it's oh, that's less than it. Okay, that's a full yet pretty much a full yellow belt going through and being turned into um, be, and being liquefied down here and turned into into, into the oils. But never mind. Uh, for the for the stuff I'm actually getting through large quantities of, I've, I've built some mines up, and those are despite the fact there are some enormous cryonite patches all over the place down here because this is a, a cryonite planet as we've as we've discussed. So there's massive patches everywhere of the enormous of ten, lots and lots of them 10 million and so on instead i've gone all the way down here because there were some massive barrel patches down here of, well i say massive uh, between the two of them they're only just over 10 million but that's big enough that i reckon i can set up a mine on them and then just leave them to their own devices for a while um, as you can see we're pulling through quite a lot in that the, the mine is is actually still running um but there's 170,000 in, in in these chests here so i don't i don't think we're um going to have a problem with that for quite a long time. And then there's a cryonite mine just down here that's got a 27 million patch because it was conveniently close to the uh, the railway lines. Um, and that is completely full. Uh, what's going on here? Either I... Oh, okay, there's supposed to be another one coming along here like this. <laughs> I um, was obviously either not paying attention when I built this mine up, or I ran out of yellow belts and just haven't been down here again since. Never mind. I mean, they're still going to pull out. Oh, and there's loads of mining mining drills missing as well. Maybe I'll go and fix that up before I leave. That seems like a good idea. So we've got all those things. Uh, all all these 
uh, raw materials coming from down here. There's some more barrel up here as well. So at the point when this becomes a problem, I'll probably put in some more mining there, and then I'll I'll scout out some more beryllium patches. It's as we did we touched on earlier. This planet isn't amazing for um, for beryl. But there's a decent amount of it there, and so I think it's we're probably better off using this planet than going off to. I think there was a, yeah, these these two are actual barrel planet. Oh, sorry, a barrel asteroid belt, um, and an actual barrel planet. This has got a, this has a non-zero threat, but it is a very very low threat. So I probably could colonise that one without too much effort. It's also very good for robots. We noticed the 0.7. Um, uh, 0.7 robot interference level. So I could come out here. It's also got um, uranium ore. It's got um, cry do we need cryonite for barrel? I think we do. And iron and, and tiny, tiny amounts of copper. So it might be, it may possibly be worth going out here if we if we discover oh, and it's waterless. So that's going to be a pain to go to. So maybe not that one. Um, and I think let's have a look at the delta V requirements. Okay, delta V 51,000 for that one and 3,000 for that one. So, this one isn't too bad to get to, the, the asteroid belt, but I have this feeling that um, going out to an asteroid belt for mining is going to be a bit of a bit of a pain. Uh, let's have a look at the... Okay, so there's... A, there's a, well, that said, there's 19 million there and another 7 million there, so... It, 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 it wouldn't be impossible, but I suspect the effort of transporting stuff from here wouldn't be worth it. Maybe in the future, once I get um, starships, that's going to be a bit more practical. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. So for now, I'm pretty happy with what I've got going on down here. Um, there's a bit of a bit of a balancing act going on um, between sort of the this producing the, uh, the cryonite at a nice, a, a nice, nice quick rate, and then trying to balance actually sort of sort of three three factors here. There's how much. Uh, beryllium gets actually made and passed through into the rocket, how much power the whole system uses, and how efficiently the system runs as well. So, and by efficiently, I mean if efficient as in the amount of output compared to the amount of input. Because I've, I've, I am fully aware that I've only got 75% of the productivity modules I could have in here. This, these are actually full of them. This one's only at two thirds, two thirds, and then over here we're only at um, three fifths. So I could put a lot more productivity modules in here if, if I had the extra power, but that would have two two um, two effects. One is that it would slow all the machines down by an enormous amount, uh, to the extent that this system probably just wouldn't really work as it is, as it's set up. I, I get I get so much less out; it, it doesn't feel worth it. Um, now I could compensate for that to an extent by putting in more machines but then you hit the, the problem where you need so much more power that um, again it's it's it's, it's difficult um, and, and, and possibly not worth it given that there does seem to be a lot of bar barrel around to turn into beryllium. Now the other possibility is that I could look for the things that are bottlenecking or that I all the machines that I've run out of all the machines that use a lot of power. So what one thing I could do is I could take all of the I've run out. I've run out of the pulverizers, so I could take all of the productivity modules out of those and just say, I don't care. I'm going to lose the extra 24% that I'm getting from those, and then start running the chemical plants with full productivity in them, uh, which I already am. And then I'd be able to run them a bit faster. I could increase productivity modules in these as well. Um, and then also on on uh, on the same note, I could take some of the productivity modules out of these because these are what are using all the power. If we look at my power usage. The 148 furnaces are using 186 megawatts, which is significantly more than the 319 chemical plants. Yes, they're capable of giving me a bigger productivity boost because they'll take five uh, productivity modules instead of three. But it, on the power usage front, it's probably better to have some of the machines running at three, at uh, three, which means a 24% boost. 24% uh, boost than it is to have these running at um, what would it be five times 40% boost, but using all of the power and not being able to produce and not being able to have it, therefore not being able to have as many of them and therefore not producing it as fast. So I think the a sensible thing to do here, and I'm, I'm I've been thinking, umming and erring over this a bit, as you can probably tell by the way I'm talking about it at the moment. I'm going, well, is it worth putting in more productivity modules and more chemical plants for these stages? and ripping out the productivity modules from these machines in order to get the throughput. And... I don't know. Maybe. 
I think what I'm going to do for now is leave it as it is because this rocket is filling up and once this gets off to work and, and there's nothing using it on the space station at the moment so so I can leave this just just ticking away running running happily and f gradually filling up and then once I get the system up and running on the space station I can look back and think well I'm not using the beryllium as fast as I'm making it so I can just forget about it and leave it alone I don't need to, I don't need to fiddle with it or I might go well, we're using it twice as fast as we're making it. I, I need to massively up production. And at that point, I can come back here with some extra um, extra nuclear power parts and build up another one of these. Up here, perhaps somewhere, or down here. or It doesn't really matter, just, just somewhere. Um, although it'd be nice if it was near this fuel fuel production system, <laughs> um, and then it, and then everything, and then I'll have twice as much power available to me. So I'll be able to I'll be able to pr boost the productivity of all of these and put in a lot more a lot more furnaces, a lot more pulverizers, without running out of power. So there's definitely potential for expansion here. Um, or I could just build a, a whole new facility a bit further down because this one's in a silly place. So there's there's lots of this potential for improvement. Um, and I'll just, see, I, think, I guess I'll just see what seems like a good idea at the time. So, my plan for now is to get get in one of these rockets, once it's, once it's basically full, fly and fly back to the space station. And once I get there, I can start thinking about, um, let's have a look at it. I can start thinking about how I want to expand from here. So as you can see, I've put in some more railway along here. Uh, it turns out signals can float in space as well, which is quite nice. Um... So I put in I put in this railway. I've got this big sort of plus shape. The idea being that I'll put each of the different types of science off on one of the uh, legs of this of this plus. In fact, one of them I'm, I'll probably extend this one even further and further out and have another have another split out here because the, the well because there's four types of science. There's also going to be doing the actual research and dealing with the trash. Um, so I'm going to need. A bigger. I'm probably going to need, yeah, need need have uh, five, six, six different areas coming off here. So I'll extend this out miles over this way and have three three of these sort of arms coming off it. I will need to get power out to them, <clears throat> out to them somehow. But to be honest, I might just go out with these red um, power, uh, red solar panels and put them in situ for all of these because I think it's going to be a lot easier than running power poles out everywhere. Um, and then I can and. Once I once I get to the point of starting to do that, and I can pull up, I can start, I can consider pulling up some of this, and then there'll be no power requirements, no resource requirements, and so on. So I can shut most of this most of this area down, and that'll that'll reduce consumption quite a lot. Um, but that's still still some way off. There's quite a lot to do on those on that sort of front. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my plan. I'm, I think I may extend these a bit further because it turns out space rail is actually relatively cheap um, all it takes where is it over here somewhere um, here we go is you, you put in a hundred rail turns into a hundred space rail you do need to add in a load of copper you need to, need to add in a load of steel but they're relatively cheap resources um, you do need to put in a purple cube for each hundred but I think I've got uh, purple cubes aren't that expensive. I, I can spare quite. A, I can spare a fair few of those. So I think I'm going to carry on making lots and lots of space rail. I've got eight, I've got almost 900 100 of it at the moment. So I think expanding this out isn't going to be too much of a problem in that, in that in that respect. Once I've done that, I've been thinking about all these other things that are being shipped in here. I, I went off and, did, and got the cryonite because I discovered I needed cryonite for making the. Um, for making the coolant here. Now that's not strictly true. There are two episodes. Is it called coolant? Uh, no, it's called thermofluid. That's close enough. Turns out, turns out, well, it turns out there's a bajillion rate ways to make it. But the way I was making it originally was was this one, which uses iron, copper, sulfur, cosmic water, and heavy oil. Turns out there's a better one here. We go if you cryonite rod, cosmic water, and heavy oil. Which produces the same amount, but it's less stuff being put in because you save three stuffs. Um, so you essentially exchange the iron for cryonite, and then you don't need the copper or the sulphur, and and you need a lot less heavy oil as well. Although I notice you do need more cosmic water now. I look at it, but I think that in general is going to be a better recipe for the way I'm I'm doing things up here. And I think I need cryonite for other reasons anyway. So bringing that up here and making the um, and producing the, the, the thermofluid of that, I reckon, is, is a significantly better way to do it. 
And so that was why I went off to get cryonite. And also I need lots and lots of ice for turning into water for all of these petrochem processes. So I needed to go off and get that as well. So that's why I went to frost. And while I was there, I thought, well, I might as well do beryllium. For the other things, um, vulcanite I can ship to here, obviously. The other ones, so the holmium, the iridium and other stuff that I'm getting from my other planets, um, holmium, iridium and the vitamelange, it occurs to me that in the short term I could just replace some of these landing pads with, um, uh, what do you call it, the, these things, the, uh, the delivery cannon chests and just carry on firing them from delivery cannon and then once one of them becomes an issue then I can go out and try and expand its production to get up to this sort of, the whole rocket based level of production like this. So rather than spending the time now going out and doing essentially this for the Vitamelange, the Iridium and the Holmium, I could be lazy and do stuff that's a bit more interesting because building this stuff up is, it's, I'm not going to say tedious, but it does take quite a lot of time just to build it all up and it's, it, I'd, I'd like to do something else. I'd like to do a bit more inventing science basically. So I can leave the, um, the, the production on um, Enki Sesui as the the relatively small scale production that's being sent out by delivery cannon here and just deliver my holmium to to um to the space station by uh by well, by delivery cannon and drop that in into one into one of the well into, into the same sort of place as one of these just by pulling up the um the cargo landing pad and putting in a del delivery cannon chest instead and i feel that's a sort of a it's moving things in the right direction so i'll be able to expand later relatively easily but without uh, needing to do all of the work out on the other planets to set them up to work by rocket so yeah i think that's probably what i'll do um as i mentioned because i'm a little bit lazy um so I, and, and i'm looking forward to getting out and doing some more of this um and doing the science playing with trains in space and that sort of thing so that's going to be the next project i think um I may come back in the next episode and say, hey, you know, I was talking about how I was going to get on with science. Well, actually, <laughs> um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So, as always, thank you for watching. Um, and I hope I hope, I hope to see you next time. I hope you're enjoying the series, of course. Um, given that I'm now, I don't know how many hours hours in, um, 240 hours in. And um, and, you're, and you're watching at this point. I'm going to assume that you are enjoying it. So I'll just say thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.